It's not that big. <laughs> it's not that big. They know, they know it's fake now. It's not that big. In this video, we're going to go over the 10 things that are not stopping you from losing weight. Seven. We'll go with seven. Let's go. We'll do that then. <laughs> Gluten. Gluten is not stopping you losing weight. It's not. It's really not. I man. don't do well with gluten. What do you mean you don't do well yeah, it's with it? because you eat a whole loaf of bread in one what do you mean? Go. What does that even mean I don't do well with it? The amount of people who are claiming to be gluten intolerant or have some kind of fucking allergy, and it, it, this goes to dairy as well. Realistically, there's fuck all people that have got an actual intolerance. Where, where are they all coming from? They all seem to be competitive like mm. physique athletes as well. All of them. Yeah. Funny that. Oh, I'm really mm. bloated after all that pizza. It must be the gluten. Could be the fact that it's a fucking large pizza. Could be that, couldn't it? Yeah, the, the amount of a large yeah. pizza. Look at it. Of course it's going to fucking bloat you. Yeah, the next day, just because you go for the gluten-free cookies doesn't mean they're any better. It's healthier. You. It's mm. healthier. No. How? It's you tell me what healthier means, right? It's, just think about it. Tell me what healthier means. What does that mean? What, what does it mean? It's got no gluten in it. Yeah. Why does that matter? Healthy. Well, gluten's bad for you. Well, does gluten make you put on weight? No, obviously not, because it doesn't mean there's an excess of calories. So what's actually fucking bad? I know, let's create something that is deemed healthier, put it in the supermarkets, three times the cost. I wonder who's going to benefit out of that. <laughs> hmm, I tell, you what, if, I tell you what, if we put this product out without gluten in for three times the cost, I don't think people will fall no for it. No one's going to buy it. I don't think people will fall for it. Let's market it as healthier. And these companies are now going, fucking, I didn't think that'd work. I didn't Fuck, think they'd fall for that. They're fucking loving it. I didn't it. think they'd fall for oh, that. They're morons. Like that. These people are fucking stupid. <laughs> like, people are looking in the gluten free uh, section. Oh, I have the gluten free brownies, but. Uh, they did, at least didn't have any gluten in. So what? They've still got fucking calories in, haven't they? Still a brownie. And they, ta they taste three times worse. Yeah. But cost three times more. Some, some of the gluten-free products, I would rather lick piss off a nettle. Skipping breakfast. breakfast. Skipping breakfast. You do not need to worry about skipping breakfast. If you don't like eating breakfast, you don't have to eat it. It does not boost your metabolism. It does not help you lose weight over the long term or over the day or whatever they say. A load of bullshit. It's not the most important meal of the day. It's not. What makes it the most important meal of the day? Your Who mom said, said that? Your mum told me. Breakfast. Kellogg's always say it as well. Yeah. Most important meal of the day. Oh, I wonder why Kellogg's say it. And even still, if you do have breakfast, actually having a carb-based cereal for breakfast is probably not the best thing. You need to no. be probably having a decent amount of protein in that meal. So don't just have a bowl of cereal and a piece of fruit. That's ridiculous breakfast. This goes for any meal as well. When people say, I can't get all my meals in. I've had it loads of times when I'm coaching. I just can't get all my meals in. I can't diet because I, I can't seem to, to manage to hit my meals. What? That's fine. Yeah, eat less then. Eat less. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you skip meals. Just Think gonna, about it. It's common gonna, sense, you're logically. Gonna you're going to get there quicker. How can skipping meals affect your fucking fat loss? Of course it can't. Starvation mode. Oh yeah, starvation mode. Yeah, that's affecting it. How, how can skipping food, how can not eating calories affect your fat loss? Of course it fucking can't. Mm -hmm. So if you want to skip breakfast, skip breakfast, as long yeah. as it doesn't mean that you overeat later on. And technically, no one ever skips breakfast. No. Because the first meal of the day is breakfast. Whether you have it 12 o'clock, 2 p.m., 8 in the morning, it doesn't really matter. Like, when you think about that, why is it, why, why breakfast? Why does it have to be at that time of day? It doesn't make a doesn't. difference. What happens if you're on night shifts? Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. And then your breakfast is at 6 p.m. Don't worry, it's something you just don't even need to worry about. If you like breakfast, have breakfast. If you don't, don't. Just make sure you track your calories over, over, spin it out, Mike. Across the entire day. That's what your mum said. And that's it. <laughs> Meal timing is not. I've heard you love the clock. I do love a big clock. The bigger the clock, the better. I thought so. You know it, mate. You've only got a pocket watch. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Can't argue with that. No. Meal timing and amount of meals as well. Yeah. Totally irrelevant for fat loss. Oh, you shouldn't eat too close to bed though. Doesn't Why? Matter. Oh, because you're not doing anything. You lay down and uh, it sits on you. It sits well, what... on you. <laughs> yeah, what happens no, if you're sat down at a desk all day? Same Does thing. It... So don't eat ever then, shall we not? No. I love that as well. The whole, um, oh yeah, you don't. Can't eat late at night because you can't. You don't have time to burn it off. Oh yeah, because everyone during the day is is really active. Yeah. Because everyone spends that's, fucking ages running around. That's not how the human body works. No, like no, no. you don't just eat something and then have to burn it off. So only if you've eaten more calories than you've expended will you then yeah. gain body fat. So works. think of it as in if you're eating the same amount every day and you've eaten less during the day, that just means that you've burned more than you've eaten. Mm during the day, so then it would balance itself out. It's like a fuel tank of a car. Yeah. Like, if you've been driving all day, then that tank is slightly empty. So if you fill it up before you fucking put the car to bed, like, it doesn't matter because you've not gone over. 
Like you've just filled up the tank again. You've got room in there. When it comes to meal timing, there are elements of meal timing that are somewhat important. If you're looking to gain muscle, you want to make sure that you eat enough protein and that's spread fairly evenly through the day. Every three to five hours, you're getting a decent protein hit in. But that is just to be optimal. Like even at that level, like even just hitting your ta your total daily protein intake is going to be enough. Yeah. Now, if you're 80 kilos, about 160 grams at least, a protein a day will put you in a good place. Whether that's split into three meals or five meals, it's, it's kind of negligible. What is important though is that that number you do split as evenly as possible through the day if you're looking for maximal recovery or maximal muscle gain. But this doesn't mean that you've got to eat every two to three hours to stoke the metabolism, mm -hmm. to ramp up fat burning. It doesn't, that doesn't happen. So when you look at studies that equate between two to 11 meals a day all the way through, they're exactly the same when calories are equated. So yep. you don't actually stoke any metabolism. That comes from the thermic effect of food. You expend calories in the digestion of food. So the pe yep. so people once thought that, well, if you ate more, then you would expend more. But it's not, it's actually a percentage of yep. the amount of food that you eat. There's no right or wrong. Just stick to your calories across the day. Do what's best for you and what fits your schedule and that will be something you can adhere to in the long term. Cheat meals, cheat meals, because when your weight loss is stopping, the best thing to do is to overeat on calories. It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Because yeah. it is. Eating more food is what you need to do. My coach has told me it's cheat meal day. Is it? Boost the metabolism. Does it? No, it doesn't. That's How? Hold, that's holding you back, if anything, that is. How? If, if you were going to say, just common sense wise, if you were going to say, right, what's going to stop you losing weight? Well, eating more. So why the fuck would a cheat meal fucking work? How's eating more gonna fucking help? The body doesn't know though, it's a cheat mate, that's why so the body doesn't know, does oh, it? Oh, you're shocking it. You're eating it still, it's not like that day doesn't count, your body wakes up one day, oh, today doesn't count, I'll do whatever I want, it doesn't count today, we'll start again tomorrow. Think about it, logically, how can eating Peter, Pe Peter, Peter, don't eat Peter, you don't eat Peter, because you'll be don't in prison. Peter. Peter, so. Peter bread. <laughs> Peter bread. Peter bread. How can eating pizza help your fucking fat loss? Of course it can't. All that's gonna happen is that it's probably gonna keep you a little bit more accountable during the week because if mm. you know you've got something coming up, and then secondly, yeah. An increase in carbohydrates might mean that you lose a little bit of water weight because you've dropped your cortisol mm. and you might just move a little bit more after. It's nothing magic about a cheat meal. If it was, no. then just have one every fucking day. That It doesn't ramp up your metabolism. A lot of people go, I need to boost my metabolism with a cheat meal. How? Think about it. They work so well, I have one every day. Every single day. Ridiculous. Because if, 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 you know, if, if one is good, then ten is better, like with cheat meals. Like, that's the way it should work. Surely if that one day it boosts your metabolism, then we'd all be walking around and going, well, all the obese people would be would be lean because they have exactly. cheat meals every day. The people who, who promote them and suggest them have no understanding of how they no. even work because they say, boost your metabolism, and then you go, oh, I felt really energised the day after. Yeah, you will do. You just eat 7,000 calories. That's what happens. You could have just had a refeed day at 3,000 calories and had the same effect and not felt like shit and want to kill yourself afterwards. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. These coaches think that the cheat meal is magic. Absolute magic. All the, all the ice cream and pizza is magic. The, pr not, the premise behind it is that it's not magic. during the week, you're lowering your metabolism by not eating. It doesn't happen that quick. It doesn't happen that quick. No. They're thinking that you're damaging your metabolism, so then you need to ramp it up to almost reset and, it. And even if you have damaged your metabolism, even if you have, which you haven't, even if you have, what's the best thing to do? Eat loads of food. That would probably be the best thing to do, wouldn't it? No. no. If you've got a lower metabolism, you probably can't eat as much food. So again, the whole premise behind it, even if it was correct, is flawed, but it's a totally incorrect theory. Oh my God, like, ridiculous. You can tell it pisses off. So let's go get more stressed out. Let's go have a coffee and get even more stressed. Adrenal fatigue, yeah. Decanam. Yeah, it's not right. Stop is trying it? to be decanam. Adrenal fatigue. It's not real. It doesn't yeah. exist. You're not, not you're not stopping losing weight because you're too stressed. There's no such thing. You don't stop losing weight. Oh, I think I'm too stressed to lose weight. There's no such fucking thing. No, adrenal fatigue is a made up term. It's not even recognised by the, like the world. Endocrinology. The World um, Institute of Endocrinology doesn't recognise it as a condition. It's not real. It's made it's not up. Real. It's made up by people usually who want to sell you supplements. That, um, adrenal that, support. That reset your adrenals. You know, like when you turn the computer on and off. Yeah. They reset. The, the body works reset like, that. It like that. The, the body works like that. Yeah. Hormones work like that. Yeah. Just reset them. Take this supplement that I'm getting money from to reset it. Yeah. You can't test it. You can't test it. Of course, you can't test it. But just take my word for it. When you look at people, we're not sponsored. We, we've got no reason to lie. But there is people making money out of supplements. I don't know who you would believe. Yeah. Do you? No, I thought we were going to get stopped for filming then, but 
he's not, he's still looking there, big fan. There's a lot of people in a lot of stressful situations who continue to lose weight up. We're trying to film over here. There's a lot of people in a lot of stressful situations who continue to lose body fat. People who suffer from anorexia nervosa, people in concentration camps, people in third worlds. Very stressful environments. Yeah. They, they tend to lose weight if they don't they, eat. They don't put on weight, do they? Just because the school run has been quite stressful today because there's a bit more traffic, that's not stopping you losing weight. The fact that you're eating fucking 10 Jaffa cakes with it probably is. So there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue, there's no such thing as too stressed to lose fat. So it's not stress that's stopping you lose body fat. The type of cardio you do doesn't alter the fat loss that you have. You so just whether you do calories. whether you do hit or list, it doesn't matter if calories are equated. If you've done four hundred hit, four hundred list, still mm. fucking four hundred. Yeah. Fasted versus fed, no difference. Again, whether you've burned four hundred calories before breakfast or yep. fucking after breakfast, you've still burned four hundred calories. Makes no difference. Like the whole thing about the fasted and fed cardio came out because one study showed that fasted cardio they burnt more fat during that session, and those that had food burn less fat but what they didn't take into account was the rest of the calories the whole day and the calorie balance over the whole day it means nothing like it doesn't mean a thing if you have breakfast before you do cardio or you have breakfast afterwards it makes no difference don't stress about that like people stress about it the fact is you've done cardio that's the key thing do the cardio burn those calories that's what helps that's exactly it cardio it doesn't burn fat per no. se not no. body fat Cardio is just a way of expending calories. All you're doing with cardio is just increasing your energy expenditure side of the equation. Same with hit and list. Like just because something's harder to do and takes less time doesn't mean it's any better for you. There's no afterburn effect. There's no metabolism boosting effect of hit. It doesn't happen. It doesn't work like that. The amount of calories you do burn extra, minimal anyway that you can do, even if you're just walking around, just doing lists or just doing normal activity every day, you burn far more calories doing that than the afterburn effect of hit. So do what you prefer. Do your cardio whenever you want to do it, whenever it fits into your schedule, but don't feel that you have to change things drastically to fit the cardio in at a certain time of day. There's nothing magic about it. It's just something to do to burn some calories. Correct. Carbs. Carbs. All thing carbs. All thing? All things carbs. All things carbs. Probably. Carbs are probably not the reason why you're not losing weight. They're definitely not the reason why you're not losing weight if they're consumed within a calorie deficit. So your carb timing doesn't matter. The source of carbohydrates doesn't really yeah. matter within reason in terms of fat loss. And what I mean by that is if you're sick into um, your calorie deficit, then it definitely doesn't matter about your carb sources. The only no. instance where you would need to worry about it is if potentially your satiety um, mm -hmm. isn't being affected and you're leaving yourself a little bit hungrier than perhaps that you should do and then therefore adherence might go. There's nothing magic about carb timing. You do not need a stupid amount of carbohydrates post-workout. You don't no. need a stupid amount pre-workout. You probably need a decent amount pre-workout, small amount, just to make sure that your training intensity is pretty high. But at the same time, if you have them three hours, four hours before that, you're still going to get the benefit of them because they are stored in the body and they can be used at a later date. So it's really no need to worry about it. And you, the best thing to do with, with carbohydrate intake is to find the times where you find that you have things like little cravings for maybe carbs or sweet things or more volume of food, that kind of thing. I like it in the evening. Yeah, and most people tend to go for the evening because they can deal with being hungry during the day when they're busy and it's when they're bored at home watching TV or in the with evening. With the family, yeah, and they feel like they want to, Yeah, they want a little something and something sweet maybe. Save your carbs for then. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I mean, it's a common thing that a lot of people like to do, but don't be afraid of them. You can eat them after six. Like The timing of them matters not. You don't need to have like just pro-fat meals away from your workout either. Any time spaced evenly throughout the day to your preference is absolutely fine. Yep. Um, there's no difference between sort of high GI, low GI, brown rice, white rice, anything like that just stick to your carbohydrate amount and your calorie amount and you're going to be just fine yeah um, it doesn't affect fat loss at all uh, so even research suggests that when calories are equated that high gi versus low gi makes no difference you might be better selecting potentially lower gi carbohydrates mainly from a, a satiety point of view because they tend to be higher in fiber um but that's about it you can eat sugar as well. Sugar yeah. is not bad. Sugar is is going to just be like any other carbohydrate for calories per gram, and it has no detrimental impact on fat loss. The only reason you don't want a, a diet that's particularly high in sugar is that it doesn't keep you feeling full, doesn't have any fiber attached to it, and like with most things, it's usually attached to quote-unquote junk foods, which are very calorie-dense. Keep them inclusive, because the less restrictive that you can make your diet, the, the better chance of you sticking to it. So The second someone bans something from your diet, what do you want? You want it straight away. Of course away. you do. Second 
second you so don't ban it and don't say I can never have sugar again or anything sweet because what's the first thing you're gonna crave after two weeks of sticking to that diet? Mm, sugar it's sweet, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then you're sweet. gonna feel like you failed and you haven't failed. It's just that people who don't know any better are just preaching this shit and they don't actually know what they're talking about. So yeah, just because it, it rhymes no carbs before marbs doesn't mean it's true. Can you think of any more? No banana before Ghana. No vagina before China. That's mine. No turkey before Turkey. No mm. ring piece before Greece. No snails before Wales. No plantain before Spain. Put down the fork before New York. Yeah, nice. You're never going to do Liechtenstein. <laughs> <laughs> no overfeeding before Sweden. <laughs> so there you go. There's there are things that are definitely not affecting your. No pasta loss. before Doncaster. <laughs> hey. So leave a comment below with the best myth you ever heard, or one of those, any of those that you've fallen for. We've all fallen for them in the past. Oh yeah. That's why we speak so passionately about them. It's because these fucking morons preaching this shit are people that we used to think knew what they were talking about, and they don't know what they're talking about. And if you think that uh, one of your friends or somebody you work with might benefit from just clearing up one of these myths, but feel free to just send them our way. Um, yeah. Give them the buy we'll some pants a low down. We'll fucking sort them out. Yeah. Anyway. Not aggressive though. Hope you enjoyed that video. Stay tuned for even more.